Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we'll be uh, wrapping up this first little batch of docent dumps by going into a deeper dive on Greg Lamb. He was the generous and unwitting source for all of the docent dumps that I have revealed thus far. So, with that said, let me just, you know, if you haven't uh, seen the docent dumps yet, I encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss the next ones. And I also encourage you to watch those videos as well. And I'm going to recap them later in the video as I talk about uh, Greg Lamb being the source for the first three. But Docent Research Group is this kingpin for uh, influencing churches that are too lazy to have pastors write their own sermons. They want to get ahead, so they get Docent Research Group to write their sermons for them and give them uh, sermon prep so they can deliver on Sunday so the pastor can do whatever it is pastors do when they're not doing their own job. So, with that said, um, let's dive into Greg Lamb. He was the generous source for this. Um, and LinkedIn was the source that um, I used for all of this information. And so, if you look at Greg Lamb, he's also the pastor at Mays Chapel Bible Church. Or Mays Chapel Baptist Church. My bad. Uh and this is in Bear Creek, North Carolina. Now, this is a very small church. It was founded in 1802. So it's a very old church, a very old church, but a very s seemingly small church. Like, it's not a large church. So he has exceeded his influence by being a researcher for Dosen Research Group. He's actually exceeded the influence that he has in a small congregation. Maybe not in intensity, but in terms of, you know, being able to mass spray thousands upon thousands of people a week with, you know, his own vision for what that church should preach on a given Sunday. He's actually exceeded his own influence um, at his own local church. And, you know, so he, and odds are, like, he probably needs to be bivocational. And I, I do not begrudge that whatsoever. It is not wrong to be a bivocational pastor. It is not wrong to be bivocational in other areas of pursuit that are also ministry related. What is wrong is the premise of docent research group that you can just pay a corporation to uh, provide sermon preparation for you because you are too lazy to do it for yourself. And so participating in that industry is very you know, ethically precarious at best. And obviously, I think in the case of Greg Lamb, uh, it's it, it's wrong. It's wrong. And I don't think we should uh, pick uh, spare any bones about it. Now, uh, while we're on the issue of ethical uh, dilemmas, is it ethical to divulge your clients on LinkedIn? Like, is he just outs three pastors and three churches that he worked with on LinkedIn. Is that ethical? I don't know the answer to that question. I guess if you're, you know, because usually if you're using Dose and Research Group, you know, you got to keep that hush hush because how many people in the pews are going to be very uh, pleased to hear that their pastor is just buying sermon prep from a corporation? I don't think many people would actually like that because they assume that their pastor is the talent. So let's actually uh, read the full statement that um, Greg Lamb wrote on his LinkedIn profile. So he's been working there since 2016. That's five years and six months. And LinkedIn always counts ahead. They always round up. In February of 2016, I began working as a contract researcher for Docent Research Group, an Austin-based Christian nonprofit organization where I worked on or on research and sermon briefs for Pastor Kevin Cauley of Redeemer Fellowship in Kansas City, Missouri. And he has a URL there. I was then promoted to a solo researcher and worked with lead pastor Ryan Rice of North Valley Community Church. Another URL there. I continued serving in both a solo and team leader research role with Pastor Dr. Bob McCartney of FBC Wichita Falls, Texas, 
a seminal SBC church with over 2,000 members, and he has a URL for that church as well. In all these roles, I essentially serve as an extension to the preaching ministry of these growing churches through providing research, exegesis, and connective tissue to help bring God's word to life and resonate with contemporary culture. So that's what um, Greg Lamb wrote about the, his um, client relationship with these churches. So let's just go through the churches one by one and recap the last few videos I did. I still encourage you to watch those videos because those are a deep dive. So Redeemer Fellowship, that was your standard woke church. That, that's just a woke church. And if you look at it, uh, Greg Lamb has a pretty diverse clientele that he lists here. These are three different types of churches. All of them are bad. All of them are bad, but they're bad in different sorts of ways. So uh, Redeemer Fellowship is a woke church. Very simple. It's just woke. Uh, so North Valley Community Church, I think this was the most satisfying to cover in my own opinion because this was your aspiring mega church, your your church um, that wants to get ahead, and it's just such a desperate and obvious plagiarism of Redeemer Church Arizona. It's a desperate plagiarism of that larger church, where even the faith statement was like an eighty six percent match when I ran through a plagiarism checker. So it is so desperate to be like that church. That church is woke. I wonder if they use Docent Research Group. That'd be an interesting. Uh, um, that'd be interesting to find out for sure. But uh, Ryan Rice uh, is an other is an ambitious pastor, but he's otherwise untalented, unintelligent, and certainly unqualified to be leading a church. This, these are just facts, and of course, he's also woke. And, you know, he had his own woke preacher clip moment. Be sure to catch that in the last, in one of the last videos I did on this. And now, Dr. Bob McCartney is your SBC stooge. And I think he uses Docent Research Group, even though he's a doctor. And I assume he has a doctorate in theology or ministry. And yet he needs someone to write sermons for him. That's embarrassing in and of itself. Uh... Although, at least Greg Lamb says that he's a PhD. So, that's a little less embarrassing. But Dr. Bob McCartney of FBC Wichita Falls you know, wants to stay competitive in Texas's megachurch culture. But using Docent Research Group also keeps him in line with Southern Baptist elites. And certainly, uh, Bob McCartney is interested, highly interested, interested in staying in line with SBC elites. He is an establishment pastor, making his church as an establishment church. Why else would someone, you know, supposedly theologically conservative endorse Ed Litton? Going back to Greg Lamb as a whole, if you look at, you know, he, he doesn't have a very large online footprint and he's not the most technologically savage or savvy, not savage. He's not technologically savage either. But he's not very technologically savvy. Uh, if you look at May's uh, Chapel ba Baptist Church, they, they have a Weebly website, and it's very unprofessional. It's not a good website whatsoever. And uh, if you look at his social media, not a very large footprint, but, you know, he does follow a lot of leftists, and, you know, leftist pastors, a lot of leftist political sources. And the only thing that was right of center as far as a political account that he followed was Ben Shapiro, the controlled opposition. If you ask me, Ben Shapiro is like the controlled opposition. Uh, you know, he's the acceptable opposition if you're a leftist. And that's why he's still on Facebook, right? Uh, so with that said, Greg Lamb may not out himself as woke, but the churches that he has a client relationship certainly betray him because he's been writing p sermons for woke churches for years. If, you know, that doesn't make him woke, what does? Because, you know, 
as a Christian, I wouldn't be writing churches for churches I don't think I would have fellowship with. First of all, I don't think I should be writing sermons for pastors anyway, because I'm not supposed to help someone who's derelict in their own duty. But uh, I certainly wouldn't do it for churches that are either simping for the establishment like Bob McCartney is, or otherwise woke. I'm not about that. But Greg Lamb obviously is. And he's a Docent Research employee. And again, it just shows what the influence of Docent Research Group is, who's behind it, and what it looks like. That's what this whole exercise of dumping this knowledge was about. It was about showing you who are the employees for Docent Research Group? Are they woke? Are they compromised? Who are the churches using them? Are they woke? Are they compromised? And certainly on the latter question, the answer was yes. The answer was yes. So it just begs the question, how systemically flawed is this industry? And I would say it's extre- it, the premise is so corrupt that it inevitably results in a corrupt church. So that's all I got to say about the docent dumps for now. I'm sure more will be coming, but this was the end of the Greg Lamb blood trail for now. And so for that, that's all I got to say about it. My name is Ray. Uh, This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel also. And let me know what you think about what I think. Uh, And I will catch you on the next one. God bless.